This is the Power Shatter Chronomancer build guide for World vs. World Roaming. And it's a fairly straightforward playstyle. You go in, you do tons of burst damage and CC, and then you either die or you get out. And the reason why it isn't usually seen as much in roaming nowadays is because the trade-off of losing distortion really makes you a free kill by yourself. So yeah, there are a lot of thieves that roam around in World vs. World and that's like the hardest counter to Chronomancer and just in general conditions, you don't have a lot of condition cleanse on Chronomancer so you're gonna struggle by yourself. However, if you roam in like a two to like five man group, Chronomancer can actually get some really good results because it can have its allies peel for it and then it can do a lot of CC and even help its allies with its wells and just in general doing a lot of damage while also enabling its allies to do damage by giving out quickness for example with Seize the Moment and just in general, you know, CCing people with massive gravity wells. So. It's a very good group roaming build in my opinion, not so much solo roaming, but you'll still see some solo roaming situations later on. So let's just get into the traits. I take Illusions, Domination, and Chronomancer. In Illusions I take Shatterstorm, probably the most important trait in this build because it makes your F1 split second, which is your highest damaging ability probably on this build, have two charges. So. Basically, while the first charge is on recharge, you've got the second one available to you. And it has a 10 second cooldown because you have illusions, which gives you lower cooldown on your shatters. So illusions is mandatory for this build in my opinion. You can not only have your first split second recharging while the second one is available, but you can also burst it and do two in a row. And that basically doubles the amount of burst damage that this build can do and basically you pump out a lot of damage because of it. So yeah, Mine Rack is insane. And while in the Continuum split, which we'll talk about a lot more later, basically you get both of your split second charges back. So you can do like four split seconds in a short window of time if you have enough clone generation, which you definitely can on this build. So yeah, Shatterstorm is insane. You also have Compounding Power, which is whenever you create an illusion, your outgoing damage and condition damage are increased for eight seconds and it stacks five times. And an illusion is basically a clone or a phantasm. So a phantasm becomes a clone. So whenever you summon a phantasm, you will basically gain two stacks of compounding power because it'll be a phantasm and then it'll become a clone. So you get basically 2% damage per phantasm. You know, once it summons both and because your greatsword four, will summon two phantasms because of the Bountiful Blades trait. You'll basically get four stacks of compounding power right at the beginning of the fight because you usually like to open with Phantasmal Berserker. So that's just a really good damage increase there. Then you have Phantasmal Haste. This is an okay trait. You don't really have stealth and you don't have Condi damage so it's really the only thing you can take here. And it just gives you a little bit more quickness when you summon your phantasm. Helps you to keep your quickness up time and makes you get out your your openers faster and it gives quickness to your phantasms which is kind of good for your shield phantasm because it's a little bit slow finally you have master of fragmentation in illusions which makes your f1 have a 25 percent increased critical hit chance which is important because you only have like 50 to 60 percent crit chance on this build and that basically means you're not going to be critting as much and you can't really get fury on this build that easily unless you go for a rune that gives it but you don't really want to go fireworks because you already have movement speed if you go pack for fury as well well then you've already got movement speed so you're losing value on the swiftness duration so it's kind of weird i take a different rune so i don't get any fury on this build and you can't go dueling because you need to go domination illusion so it's really nice that you do get split second increased crit chance. So you've got like 75 to 85 crit chance on your split second. It also makes your rewinder cripple. It's not an amazing skill. It'll do a little bit of confusion. You don't really care about that, but it's just another shatter, which will give you alacrity and quickness if you really need it. And the fact that it cripples can be nice because 
when you cripple an enemy, not only will they not be able to escape you as easily, but they'll also take 5% more damage from other shatters when they are uh, crippled because of time catches up, which makes your shatters deal increased damage to movement impaired foes. But you can also get cripple from mind stab as well, which is usually how you get the cripple for your shatter combos. So. Um, you also have time sync giving your F3 from Master Fragmentation. It gives it an AoE, which is really nice because it's a daze and a slow. So you'll slow in an AoE around your target. And then Continuum Split will also gain a base duration of 1 because of Master of Fragmentation, which is nice because Continuum Split is where you want to be doing your big combos and it's kind of like whatever you can fit into the combo you can use it twice so the longer you're in it the better and it also allows you to do continuum splits with zero clones because if you do it with zero clones you only got one second so you don't really have much time to do anything but if you do it with zero clones and master of fragmentation you have a little bit more time to fit some stuff in there and because of seize the moment which gives you quickness whenever you shatter you'll basically, whenever you use Continuum Split, you'll gain quickness, so you can fit quite a bit of stuff in there. So then in Domination, you have your Bountiful Blades trait is going to make your Greatsword 4 and 2 do a little bit more of an effect. Whenever you interrupt someone, you'll give them vulnerability, and whenever you daze them, you'll also give them more vulnerability. Then you have Shatter Concentration, which gives you boon removal on your shatters. It only counts for the first strike of Split Second, so the second strike won't remove boom just the first one and then fragility will give you extra damage per stack of vulnerability so you definitely want to be dazing people before you do your burst because then you'll get more vuln and that vuln is even stronger with domination finally is vicious expression you'll deal 15 percent more damage to foes without boons and you will remove boons from foes that you cc so you can CC with quite a bit of things like Gravity Well, with your Tides of Time, which can actually hit twice. You've got your Greatsword 5, you've got your Time Sink. So all these things that can CC can remove boons. And you also have Shattered Concentration to kind of like give you that extra boon rip to get someone to have no boons to get that 15% extra damage. And what's really nice is your Gravity Well. When you have someone in like a Gravity Well combo, you're usually taking so many boons off of them and it allows you to basically get that 15% extra damage to someone because while they're CC'd and you're able to land all your damage on them, they're losing boons over time. They're getting shattered on and getting CC'd. So it's a really good trait for like your gravity well combo. And then in Chronomancer, we know that time catches up. We'll give you super speed on your shatters so whenever you shatter a clone, it will run in towards the enemy that you shattered it on. But they move kind of slow normally, so it's easy for them to react to it and to you know, basically counterplay it. But when you have time catches up, your clones get super speed and they'll run really fast at the target and shatter in them. So it helps it to land your damage, especially for your F1 skill which you can't always be on top of your target and your clones won't always be on top of your target. So they won't always shatter instantly. So time catches up is very good. And it's a little bit weird because normally melee clones will move the same speed as if they're shattering. So people can, they can't really tell when you're shattering or if the, the clone is just moving in towards them. But with time catches up, you kind of tell them when you've shattered because they can see the super speedy clones. So that is maybe a little bit of a detriment to the skill. So if you really cared though, you have the option to do all's well that ends well, which gives extra healing if people stand in the final effect of your wells. And you've got three wells in this build, so it can give a lot of support to you and your allies, especially because Chrono has low sustain. But I like to ensure that my bursts go off, so I like time catches up. You also have Alacrity whenever you shatter. And this build shatters quite a bit and alacrity will reduce the cooldown of all of your skills by 25 percent so basically every four seconds that you have alacrity you will gain one 
second of cooldown off of all of your cooldowns. And it may not sound like a lot, but it does make a difference over time because it's all of your skills getting reduced cooldown. So it's it's super important for not only your sustain, but also your damage because you can get your damage skills faster and you can get your heal skill faster. Which, yeah, so shattering is super important because of that alacrity. And because of that, you're going to be taking Illusionary Reversion, which is whenever you shatter with maximum of three clones, you'll gain an extra clone. And this is very important for use with the mirror images, because what you'll do often is you'll go into like Continuum Split, and that's a shatter with three clones. So then you'll have one clone, which means that you need two more clones to get three clones for another extra clone. So what you can do is use mirror images right after you do a three clone burst and mirror images gives you two clones. So three shattered and then you get one and then you get an extra two from mirror images. Then you shatter three instantly because mirror images is instant and then you get an extra clone and then maybe you can fit in like a clone generation skill in there. So you can basically shatter like like eight, seven or eight or even more clones in a window of like one second if you pull it off right. And because of split second having a two charge because of mind rack or a shatterstorm, basically what you can do is you can do split second with three charges and then you can do a mirror images right after and do another three clone split second for a massive burst. So yeah, mirror images with illusionary reversion and mind rack or shatterstorm, sorry, is super good. And then you have Time Marches On, which is just going to give you a base 25% movement speed and reduces movement inhibiting condition duration on you. This is a really good trait because it allows you to take a different rune. So on Mirage and Core Mesmer, you basically have to take like Traveler or Lynx or like some other rune that gives you movement speed because you can't really get swiftness easily on Mesmer. So this allows you a lot more build diversity because you don't need to take those runes and you'll see that my rune is very important on this build. And then finally it sees the moment whenever you shatter based on how many clones you have it gives you quickness. So it's a very important trait for getting out your damage fast and just making your greatsword auto attack deal a lot of damage because if you have quickness on your greatsword auto it actually does quite a bit of damage. So the equipment I take is Basically full Berserker on the left side, so armor and weapons is all Berserker and then all Marauders on the trinkets. I think I have a, yeah, I have a Berserker back piece. So everything Marauder except the back piece. And then I take the Defender Rune. So this is what I was talking about when I said the Rune is very important. Defender Rune gives you toughness, which is nice because I have no toughness on Mesmer. It's like a base, pretty much base um, toughness or armor with light armor is very squishy so a little bit of toughness actually is nice a little bit of healing which isn't that good but it gives you 10 percent extra maximum health and whenever you block on a one second icd you will heal for five percent of your maximum health and that basically means you'll heal for 1000 whenever you block so it's a very good rune with all the blocks that are available on this build so you have Echo of Memory, which will give you a two second block. I believe it's a, it's like a one and a half second block. And you can basically block twice because if you time it right, you'll get the ICD and then you'll block after the ICD is over. So you can get a potential of 2000 healing from one Echo of Memory. And then if you block an attack with Echo of Memory, you can use it again, which means that you can gain like 4000 healing if you use it correctly and yeah you can heal a lot from blocking just from your four and because you have a lot of alacrity on this build you gain sustain from using more and more of these skills that allow you to block and well of precognition as well will pulse out three aegis on allies who are in the well so that can give you it usually doesn't give you 3000 healing because you're not usually getting the block hit every single time and then the Aegis will stack up in duration rather than intensity. So you usually don't get the maximum amount of healing but it's pretty good because Well of Precognition is another stun break 
it's some Aegis to kind of like give you extra like sustain and it's nice support for your team so it's pretty nice with the defender rune so yeah I take defender rune mostly marauder and then some zerk to get 20,000 health which will give you 1k healing per the block and then on my great sword I take the sigil of cleansing and the sigil of air you kind of need cleansing on this build because you lack it the only real cleansing that you have is well of eternity so yeah you kind of need double cleansing sigil and then I take the air sigil because that gives you the most damage out of any kind of like sigil in like a roaming burst play style and then for the sword and shield I take energy cleansing you obviously need the double cleansing and then I just take energy you could take absorption though which would be really good because you would remove more boons which would give you more synergy with your vicious expression so you can take uh, absorption there or like any other kind of like interrupt thing like separation even might be good that'll give you a little bit more precision and that could actually be a lot better but energy I like because usually you're gonna be outnumbered and without the energy sigil I would probably die a lot more than I already do to be honest because yeah I die quite a bit on chronomancer and the food that I would take is literally just the uh, power ferocity food with the spicy butternut squash soup the weapon skills on your greatsword, the auto attack is a very long range beam which is kind of nice for just poking your target. Mirror blade is a long range unblockable projectile which will bounce between targets. It will give might to allies and vulnerability to enemies. So what you want to do is be in melee range when you use it and that way it'll bounce between you and the enemy and it can give 12 vulnerability and you 9 might. So it increases your burst quite a bit for you to use mirror blade in melee range as opposed to using it at range and then you won't give yourself any might so it's important to get that might when you're in melee range and you have mind stab which is just a real quick little aoe on the ground which will cripple which is nice for giving the cripple for your shatters to do more damage and then you have phantasmal berserker which is a very insane long ranged ability which will remove two boons on the first strike that it does so you'll see I shoot out a little blade and then it summons two phantasms right afterwards which will do very heavy hits so you remove two boons you do a phantasm that does a lot of damage and then you create two clones so this is definitely your best ability on the greatsword and because it does so much you want to usually use it in continuum split to get two of it but a lot of times it's hard for you to get the clone generation to use your continuum split so in a lot of ways you want to make the decision whether you want a higher uh, clone continuum split or you want to use phantasmal berserker in your continuum split and then you have illusionary wave which is just a melee range knockback which is very good for setting up like a gravity well burst because you can knock them back and then use a range gravity well from afar and then you can set up combos like that so your clone generation comes from your two skill which gives one clone if it lands and then your phantasmal berserker doesn't need to land because both of those can miss but if you get blinded it will basically you won't get the clones from it um, if they blind you not your clones and then in sword you have your sword auto attack which actually does quite a bit on the third strike it'll do a single boon removal and if it hits a target who has no boons it will do a ton of damage so this is really good because it synergizes well with all the boon removal on this this build and vicious expression as well so you'll do a lot of damage in a lot of cases when you're ceasing people on your sword you're just spamming your auto attack for damage and then you're doing like instant cast shatters as well so it's a very important part to get used to landing the final hit of your sword auto chain and then blurred frenzy is a evade which is kind of nice it does a little bit of damage but usually you want to use it as an evade and you have illusionary leap which is a clone generation so you create one clone and then it'll cripple the target and in a couple seconds you can swap between that clone 
and you can immobilize the target when you swap if the clone is in range and you use this to set up combos very often. Then you have Echo of Memory which gives you a block for one and a half seconds if they attack through your block and you block something then you can use it again and it gives protection to nearby allies and slow to nearby enemies that it hits. And then you have Tides of Time which is like this kind of like kind of like a projectile wave that you shoot out and then it comes back and on the way out it gives you quickness and on the way back it gives you alacrity and it will also recharge itself 10 seconds if you catch it on the way back and it'll also do this weird kind of thing where it goes out to its furthest point and then it'll come back to you but it'll change direction to where your current location is so you can do a lot of ways like combos that are mobile so like I can go over here and then blink over there and then it just keeps following me in a way so you want to kind of remember when you throw out your tides of time because you can reposition it and get secondary stuns because it can stun on the way out and on the way back so it's very good for enabling your combos and then you have your shatter skills so you generate your clones and then you have your shatters so split second We'll just do AoE on the area that you use it and of course on your location as well because of illusionary persona which means that you are a clone. So my clone will shatter and then it will do a secondary hit on that same location that it's shattered on. So basically what that means is if you go into melee range with your like your big shatter burst you can do it and then it'll do the secondary second split on the location that you originally shattered on so you don't need to stand there to get the second hit you just need to be where you want it to be initially and then you can dodge out and get to safety so yeah use your second split in melee range and then you can get out and it does like the secondary hit where the initial shatter happened you have rewinder i don't really use this that much but you can just use it for a little bit of alacrity or quickness to like start off your combo so in a lot of ways what i like to do is I just use F2 with no clones and then I use my GS4 which will make the GS4 go out a lot faster because you have quickness on it and then from there you get quickness from using a phantasm and then kind of just makes your combo come out a lot smoother and then you have time sync which is a daze and it gives slow so it's just really good CC and it'll be AoE because of the master of fragmentation trait and because it's a daze, it also is a boom removal. So this is your second best shatter besides continuous split, which is obviously your kind of like, it's in a different league than all your other shatters. So how continuum split works is you, it's just like any other shatter where it requires clones, but then you enter into a mode, sort of like distortion, but instead of being invulnerable, you enter into a mode where you basically save it's sort of like saving your point in time and then when the continuous split ends the duration depends on how many clones you use plus an extra second from master of fragmentation and you'll go back to the original location and all the cooldowns that you used will come back after you leave the continuum split so you see that i have all those cooldowns back so you keep the clones that you generated while in the continuous split though which is very nice because you can basically use your phantasmal berserker inside the uh, continuum split and then you can get those clones outside of it and then you can use it again outside of it because you use it inside so you get tons of clone generation by using phantasmal berserker while inside your continuum split and then you can also just use mirror images for free while inside your continuum split it also gives you your dodges back so if you you usually don't want to be dodging inside your continuum split, but if for whatever reason you have to, I mean, then you'll get them back. But you'll be sent back to your original location and your original health. So the only thing that doesn't get removed or basically that uh, doesn't get forgotten from your continuum split is your conditions and your CCs, at least negatively, because you can get a ton of positive things that will remain. But so if you get a lot of conditions on you while you're in continuum split you're gonna basically keep those after you get back out and you're gonna also stay stunned if you get stunned while in it so that's kind of dangerous and also 
people can kill your continuum rift so generally you want to be ccing people around you so that they don't kill your continuum rift before i go into the utility skills there's a very important thing you want to have enabled is instant ground targeting under your options because what this does is it allows you to with retargeting enabled it allows you to basically change where your wells are placed based on where your mouse is so for example if you look at my mouse right here if I start casting my heal well over here and then I move over here it finishes casting where I move my mouse rather than just staying at the location that I start casting it at and what this allows you to do is to judge movement and over the entire cast time you can potentially make the decision that maybe you want it in this location instead and you can also increase the range of a skill that you use because the range is of the location when you finish casting it not when you start casting it so in other words if I want to cast it this far at the maximum range it would go like around here but if I cast it and then I move forward while casting it the range will go a little bit further to like here so it's really good to have instant cast and retargeting on wells or any kind of like ground targeting ability like that and it's especially good on the gravity well because you really want to catch your opponents in it and you can't really predict where they're going to move with the heal well you can say okay i can i want to go here and then i want to walk into it so that's really easy but for your opponents they're going to be moving around and not going into the places where you want them to go so what you do with the gravity well is you'll say they're starting where uh, this golem is and then they'll end up moving where this guy is what you do is you you just keep your cursor on the target and then you put the gravity well on them when it ends so it's really important that you're doing that and you have to be very mindful of your cursor and good with your mouse if you do that because if you're just waving your mouse everywhere then yeah it's going to go in a place that you don't want it to be even near so yeah make sure you're, you're careful with that but also it's very powerful if you get good with that however well of precognition does not have that ability because technically the skill has finished casting when you start casting it because it has a stun break on it and for that reason you can't stow it but it does have stability on it but yeah if you see here with well of precognition i start here and i move it over there but it still stays over there so you can only reposition eternity and gravity well and not precognition so the reason first of all why i take well of eternity is because with continuum split you can actually get like one and a half wells of eternity because if you use well of eternity while in continuum split then you leave continuum split and you gain the second benefit of it then it's like you got it free because it's off cooldown so you can basically get like one and a half wells of eternity a little bit more than a half and you can also do the same with well of precognition you use it while you're in continuum split and then some of that aegis duration goes over while you're out of the continuum split and then you can use it again so that's even more sustain that you're capable of and i'll show a sustain kind of rotation for the continuum split later mirror images as we already went over is great for getting your clones to the three mark which can give you the illusionary reversion and it will also break enemy targeting which because this build has no stealth in it it's really the only way to do that Sometimes your clones can just die instantly because World vs. World can be so highly scaled. So it's nice to not try to just like build your clones up. You want to just like shatter your clones as soon as you've got a decent amount of them. Because if you get too greedy to go for like the third clone, sometimes your first few clones can just die. So you want to often shatter very quickly and Mirror Images allows you to do that because you build one clone, then you Mirror Images, then you shatter. So it's very nice for that. And then Will of Precognition is, as we said, really good for the Aegis that it gives you, which can heal you with the Defender Rune. Blink is a must, and Gravity Well will pulse three CCs on the target. So you put it down on the ground, and it puts out like a stun, and then it floats, and then pulls them in together. So 
really good for just pulling everyone together and then doing like massive AoE combos while they're locked up like that. And each of those CCs will remove a boon because of the trait Vicious Expression. So generally when you want to use your Continuum Split is when you have a lot of your cooldowns ready to be used. Now that's a little bit weird because you have to use your skills to gain clones to get a longer Continuum Split. So there's like a balance there where the more clones you have up, the less skills you can use in your Continuum Split but the more time you have to use those skills in continuous split, it really varies. You can have a one clone, you can have a zero clone, you can have a three clone continuous split. It really just depends on the pacing of the fight. If it's a really slow fight, then you wanna wait for all your cooldowns to come up and you're just slowly gaining your clones in preparation for a massive continuous split, then you can do that. But if it's a really quick fight where you need to put out stuff really fast, then maybe you do a one clone or maybe even a zero clone continuum split. It really just depends on the situation and the plays that you can make really vary so widely that there's really no one way to do it. But I will show a couple of standard continuum split rotations that you can do, assuming that you have all of your cooldowns up. So it's really going to vary on the situation. But let's start out with the very basic Continuum Split, which is the Illusionary Leap, which is going to give you one clone. And then I'm going to Tides of Time into the Continuum Split. And basically a skill that you finish casting in Continuum Split will count as being inside the Continuum Split. So if I use Tides of Time out of the Continuum Split and then I finish casting it inside the Continuum Split, it counts as being used inside it. So here I'm going to show off a very basic Continuum Split combo. What I'm going to do is Illusionary Leap into Tides of Time. I'm going to use Continuum Split right as I'm doing the Tides of Time, which means that the Continuum Split will technically count the Tides of Time and it'll go off recharge when it comes off. And then I will immediately Gravity Well, I'll Mirror Images, and then Greatsword 2 and then I'll Greatsword 4 and by then I'll pretty much be out of Continuum Rift. I'll try to fit in anything else if I can and I'll just be spamming all of my shatters because all the shatters come off cooldown when you leave it and yeah pretty much after the first split second which I get three clones on I'll just spam shatters and then after that I'll leave the Continuum Split and I'll have all my cooldowns off and then I'll just go ahead and pop off again because I can just repeat it so here we go so yeah that's pretty much it I didn't use as many shatters as I could while inside the continuum rift but yeah that's pretty much how it works I mean you can just be spamming your shatters at all times within that you gotta be careful though with the time sync because you'll break your, your gravity well, which will allow them to dodge if they're spamming their dodge key. So now let's show off a more defensive Continuum Rift. So say for example, I get like almost one-shotted by a thief and I'm at like three health from the start. Now I can either try to use my Blurred Frenzy or I can try to like use my block, but then they can get through the block if they're like a sword dagger thief. So what would I do to survive? Well, I could immediately just use Well of Eternity into my Continuum Split, then use Well of Precognition, and then just pop off as many other things as I can. So I can just do this into this, and then once the Wells come off, I can use the Wells again, and that would give me my Well of Eternity, and I can use my Precognition twice. So you pretty much just use both your Wells inside your Continuum Split there, and you want to make sure you do the Well of Eternity first because the Well of Precognition, you want to get more value out of its duration, whereas the you kind of want to get the end of Eternity more so. Okay, so now I'm going to show a Continuum Split combo that is a lot more complicated. So I'm going to have two clones to start. I'm going to land a Mirror Blade. Hopefully that lands. And then that's going to give me three clones. 
So now I can three clone continuum split. I'm going to basically get an illusionary reversion because continuum split is a shatter, which will give me one clone, which I'm inside a continuum split while I'm getting illusionary reversions. And I'll be casting my Phantasmal Berserker, which will give me two more clones. But because the Phantasmal Berserker is a little bit delayed, it's going to take me a little bit while to, to get those up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Mirror Images first. And I'm going to gain three clones from that. And then I can use my first split second with three clones, which is going to give me an Illusionary Reversion again. So I'll have one clone. And then my Phantasmal Berserkers by then will probably be giving me clones so I'll have three clones again and then I can use my second split second which will give me three clones for illusionary reversion <laughs> stay with me here so that's my third illusionary reversion clone and by then I can swap into my sword and I can use the sword um, the shield five to stun them and just auto attack so the auto attack is really good in sword because you while you're doing all these shatters, you have quickness, and your sword auto attack with quickness does quite a bit of damage. So you're just auto attacking with quickness, and then once you've done your your second second split, and you've got the illusionary version on that, you've got an extra clone. You can do sword three to get a second <laughs> uh, clone, and then you can just rewind it or something like uh, time sync maybe. And then <laughs> once you leave. Uh, continuous split. You can just do that all over again. This first fight is going to be against a thief, which is a Condi thief. I didn't know this at the time, but I get them off their mount and I play as aggressively as I can, but they go in stealth, so I have to kind of like tank their Condis. I use my Continuum Rift with my heal skill to prevent a lot of their initial opener on me, but I keep playing aggressively and I put a gravity well on their shadow step so that they have to take it back and I stand on their return spot and auto attack them when they come back and that allows me to get the kill because I basically play around their outs or if they have a potential of surviving then I play to get the kill in the case that they play for that. Here's going to be a 1v1 versus a core necro which are known to be very tanky and very survivable and a lot of condies which my build doesn't really handle too well but because i play so aggressively against the core necro it allows me to pressure them into not being able to use their long-winded kind of like condi rotations and that essentially peels for me because i don't take as much pressure and just in general a good offense is a is a better defense for this build because if if I'm pressuring them then I don't have to worry too much about my health so yeah once again aggression is super important against thieves against necros against pretty much everything on this build it's meant to be aggressive so here I just knock them out right as they go into lich because they're not expecting me to have that much burst so they didn't even get their lich off now this fight is going to be a little bit of a long-winded encounter I open up on this Deadeye and use my burst on them with my continuum rift and I immediately down them. So I use my wells on top of myself so that I can use my greatsword to kind of like cleave the down body. One thing that is really good about precog is that while you're not in your sword and shield set you're kind of vulnerable right because the greatsword has no self defense other than the greatsword 5. So I like to use precognition while I'm in the greatsword so I can kind of just like sit there and cast and it gives me a lot of peel so it's really nice. Now I'm on this firebrand and I get a really good burst on them too so I'm just picking people off on the side playing very safely 
and then when I get it down I'm trying to like cleave them slowly with my greatsword and maybe like bait them to go for like a res and then I can go for a massive cleave and maybe like convert a couple more people into the down state off of that so here I do realize yeah I'm gonna be pretty outnumbered so I start kiting up this little uh, like ramp I put the well on it in a weird angle so that I can sort of go up it at the same time and yeah I see that there's like a little bit of red and green here so it's kind of like a three-way fight so I want to pick off the guys that are going to pose a greater threat if you know they if they win right like if one side beats the other so I am trying to fight the the green guys right now that was a huge whiff on my yeah I think I double tap my continuum riff. I don't know if I said this before but I'm not an amazing mesmer but I still have decent positioning that's gonna allow me to live without my cooldowns I get the down here and I once again precognition myself and that allows me to not only gain a little bit of sustain from the Aegis but to just sit there and free cast with my greatsword and cleave the down now I'm getting chased by a necro and a ranger I use line of sight here but it's very dangerous. I use my sword too and I dodge, keep using the line of sight, and I get knocked out of my well heal. So this is a very dire situation. I use both of my shield blocks and I actually use my blink backwards there to try to juke and actually get out of combat because I lose where they, the enemy basically doesn't know where I went. So it allows me to go out of combat super important is when you have low sustain you need the mobility to get out of combat so I gravity well here and the well the ranger just gets out of it so there's not really much play potential or kill potential there I have to be very safe here I use my stun break from mirror images and then I time sync to just put slow and daze them to prevent them from killing me but yeah it's very dangerous the necro goes in shroud so I immediately blink away they leave Shroud, so I dodge the Spinal Shivers there. I probably would have died there if I got hit by that. And now I'm trying to be a little bit safe. I could go out of combat here, but I'm playing very riskily um, because I want to get the kills here. Actually, this yeah, this is going to be an easy kill here, probably. On this, yeah, we're going to get the down. I'm giving myself the Wells, and I could even just let the yeah the pet hit me there which kind of healed me for 1k because of the defender runes. Now I get a massive an Omega burst combo here with CC on the um, the gravity well into all of my F1s. This feels so good when you land that. And yeah, now we're getting chased by a DH and this is very dangerous because they can do a lot of unblockable attacks. So a lot of my blocks, which give me defense, don't really work against DH. They can pull you through the block. So I am playing very safe here around the terrain here and I go to the top of this and try to bait them with my wells here but they don't really care about that. It is healing me quite a bit to keep blocking them but yeah they're probably doing more damage to me. Now I blink away to try to get out of combat again and this time they're chasing really hard so I get my block off and that allows me to stay out of combat till I fully heal so now we're in a very good spot I land a big burst into their and even interrupt their F2 with my shatter combo and my greatsword 5 and now they're probably gonna chase me down because it looks like they, yeah, they've started to win the map I get pulled and this is a really bad situation now so I use my well I just get interrupted and feared so I have to port away I use all of my wells here to try to sustain you don't want to be using your evades while you have the precognition because that's just going to deny you of healing. So it's really good to time your precognition and then play aggressively while you're in your precognition. And yeah, I just throw out as much damage as I can because I can't escape. And you are going to die on this build obviously because it has very low sustain. But it has decent enough sustain to survive as long as I did. So that, that was a pretty good showing of how you kite on Chrono and how you can get kills and kind of play opportunistically. So anyways, if you like this build, give it a like and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys next time.